in the 70s, board games and improv theater had a baby, and it was called the role-playing game. These games allowed a generation of kids to live out their dreams of slaying dragons and saving kingdoms, all while sitting in their bedrooms and basements. Today, gaming has moved into the cultural mainstream, and role-playing games are back with a vengeance. Join us now as five of these former kids come out of the basement and onto the internet to experience adventure, mystery, and obscure pop culture references. It's time for Roll for Combat. Hey everyone, welcome to Roll for Combat. I'm your GM and host, Stephen Glicker. And in this week's episode, the boys continue their exploration of the moon base, and they decide to enter a room that has Do Not Disturb out of order. What could possibly go wrong? Also this week, I'm going to discuss our recent Pathfinder Society quest that I just posted, and what my thoughts were on that little adventure. So I love adventure paths. I think they are one of the greatest adventures in the history of role-playing games. However, one issue with adventure paths is that every so often you will get fluff or padding in adventure. And that is really just because, you know, you need to get these guys up to the next level or there's these weird areas inside of a module that they just don't know what to do with. And the nice thing is with Starfinder, this has been extremely minimal. I have seen padding, but it's pretty rare because the modules are much smaller than Pathfinder modules. Now in Pathfinder, I've seen entire levels be nothing but padding. And whenever that happens, I just cut it. I'll be honest, I just take it right out. I tell the guys, look, I look at this and it's like 10 rooms of fighting for the sake of fighting. There's no story, there's no plot development. It's just there to make you get up to the next level if you're using XP and I just cut it all out. Now, to sort of give you a behind the scenes, we had about an hour and a half left and I wanted to wait and save the big boss fight for next week with Stephen Radney McFarlane, who wrote the adventure to actually play the big bad boss, which, spoiler alert, is going to happen next week, and that's a lot of fun. So I told these guys, look, just go to this area and we'll just see what happens. And they probably wouldn't even go there. They're actually about to like open up the main door and kind of finish the entire book. So I told them, look, just just go there and let's see what happens and we'll have some fun. And they go into this area and it doesn't quite go the way I thought it would because, well, you'll see. I'll talk more about it after you listen to the show. I don't really want to spoil it, but it gets kind of gnarly. And man, uh, yeah, I almost had to cancel the week after because it got so gnarly. But yeah, every so often we actually do have to almost change up the way they're exploring the dungeon. I rarely will tell them this, but for the sake of the show and the sake of time, every so often I will cheat a little and I'll say, look guys, just go over here for now instead. And that's the difference between a podcast adventure and playing with your friends. You know, with your friends, you can just, well, go crazy. You can go off the map. You can sort of break the adventure. You can just, well, do whatever you want. But the combination of an adventure path and where everyone sort of signs on knowing that this is a preset adventure, that you're supposed to go from point A to B to C, that you don't actually have to go exactly the way they outlined it, But you should all kind of stick within the confines of the adventure. It is a comprehensive story that is designed to take you from beginning, middle, and end. And if you kind of go around that, there will be trouble. This has actually happened to me in the past. Actually, it happened with Kingmaker, which is notorious for this, is that Kingmaker was sort of designed to be non-linear, that you can go in any order and sort of end up in the same location, sort of end up in the same path. But my players didn't really get along with that concept, and they went all over the place. They kind of broke the game, and then we never finished it because they were very upset. To this date, I will say the reason it didn't work is because they didn't accept the social contract of playing an adventure path, is that if you don't buy into a tight, comprehensive story, that you are not going to have fun. 
with that being said, I often will sort of guide these guys and just tell them, look, you know, if you're getting a little bit off track or you're going a little off path, just go this way. And it doesn't really break the immersion because that's what they signed up for. They signed up for an adventure that will take them through a predetermined path. So I don't feel like it's breaking the immersion. And I don't think they do either. So this is one of those examples where they actually were going to go somewhere, but I just told them, look, I'm going to save this for next week. we got a special guest. I want him to run it. Let's go over here. And they were all like, fine, no problem. And they did. So if that ever happens to you, like, let's just say you aren't prepared for an adventure or you're not prepared for a section of adventure, feel free to talk to them about it. Now, if they go crazy and they're like, oh, you're breaking the immersion, you're breaking the role playing, you're breaking this, you should really go with the flow. You know what it's like as a GM to just make up stuff as you go along. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's horrible, and sometimes you end up breaking your own game because you start introducing elements that you didn't expect, and then it starts messing up things that are happening later, and then your entire game is like sort of destroyed. So don't be afraid to talk to your players about this and sort of sit back and kind of take off your GM hat and talk to them like human beings and say, look, we're all in this together. I didn't prepare this section. Do you guys either want to stop playing tonight or do you actually want to go over here and we can take it from there? Hopefully they're mature enough to say, okay, you know what? Let's just have some fun. We still got a few hours. Let's go play over here. And that's kind of what happened here. And to be honest, it kind of went in a way I did not expect, which was fun for everyone. So anyhow, with that, let's sit back and listen to this week's episode. So we're going to go to the east, I guess, yes? Chris Beamer is playing the tiefling technomancer, Akiro the Just. Yeah. Oh, did we search this room at all? No. Not really, no. And also, what's going on with the armor? Well, let's search these uh, cultists, too, while we're at it. Golem Forge Plating 3. Okay. John Stats plays the Vesk Soldier, Mo Dupinski. It's actually... D-Suit 3. Yeah. Plus 11, better. plus 12. It's um pretty it's, good. It's Yeah, it's it's a plus 1 for EAC for Mo. And it's light armor, though. Keep it's it light Hey, that's that means I move faster. That's yeah. What, what's the EAC on it? Uh, it's EAC um, plus ten, KAC plus twelve. So oh, yeah, Mo will. Wow, that's nearly as good as mine. Po, Mo will probably put that on. I've got level seven armor, so. Wow, I think that's great that you're improving, almost up to the best you could have. Bob Marquis is playing the human envoy Rusty Carter. Is Rusty wearing heavy armor? No. No, no, it's light. Yeah, that's that's it's okay. My, it, it's my level ten armor that's plus twelve EAC and plus thirteen KAC. So, how did you get that armor again? Because uh, oh, uh, that, look, the past passed. Let's not worry about that. Yeah. All right, all right. Yes, yours, so. yours is plus twelve, plus thirteen, Bob. Well, yes, but really, who's counting? Well, I'm counting because mine's actually plus thirteen, plus fifteen. So, oh yes, god damn it! <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. Why am I guy? I've got the crappiest armor. You guys. Yeah. Look, Mo, get up front where you belong. All right. Just get up front. All right. right. Yes. Yeah, so mine, mine is heavy armor, though. It's a plus one. So I'm plus 11, plus 12. I think that's great. You have better armor. That's wonderful. All right. You got, you got right. an upgrade. Good for you. That's you know, is that better I, for you? For me, no. So what does that give you? If you're going to put that on, what extras does it give you? And then you lose your other. Um, yeah, yeah, I use my haste stuff. circuit. Um, oh, you can move the haste circuit. You can move it. You can move it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll move my haste circuit on it, and um, uh, it just gives me plus one to EAC. My KAC stays the same. Okay, I gave it to you. Uh, I move five foot faster. I also move five foot faster. Mm, well, well, well. Aren't we the? That's pretty good. That's, That's actually pretty good. I can really move good. forty now. Did you put on the jetpack too? Oh yeah. Why not? Yeah, jet how many things can you put? How many slots? Three. Well, it has jet three, three takes slots. Two. Jetpack takes two, I think, doesn't it? Jetpack might take two. Actually, the haste circuit might take two, too. Takes one, I think. I could be wrong. Wait a minute. The the the, the armor I'm wearing has jump jets and a haste circuit right now. Yeah, but jump jets different than jetpack. 
Oh. Jetpack lets you fly, actually. <laughs> That's like Mary Poppins. Oh, Mo yeah. is totally putting that <laughs> one. Yeah, I want a jet. I want a jetpack now. Yeah, jetpacks allow you to basically fly. Oh, they didn't. He didn't have to land. He could have just. Oh, because jump jets. I screwed that up a little. Jump jets. You have to sort of jump and land, jump and land. Jetpack. He could have just stayed up in the air the whole time. But it didn't matter because he just would have fallen from that thing. That it's from the trip happened. thing. Yeah, it still would have happened. So I finally got to use that. That's good. It actually would have worked great whether he was in the air or not. It's only one time per day, but it's kind of a cool fusion. And plus, I like it's got the Hell Knight theme. It's interesting. These fusions, they make your weapon look different. Like, it has descriptions on that. My arm okay, is also so like heavily ra radiation I resistant. Put that on All, right. You. All right, what else you got? It is. What else you guys want to do? Are you going east? Are you going to go down the Let's corridor go east. of death? I mean, the corridor of demons. I mean, the corridor of doggy. Resident Evil? The Resident Evil corridor? Uh, uh, down to the east, I hear things rattling off. Dead by dawn. Dead by dawn. So I'm going to go there. Uh, yeah, we'll go east. Um, this might be a uh, trap area. Actually, Akira, you should know. Do you know this area? Oh, your spidey senses are going off. No. Your spidey senses Do you are know going off. No, I you guys know never I, I just know the guy because he, he was a cultist with me when I was a cultist. Yeah, you, you don't know anything about this place. Mo fears long, thin corridors. Um, we can send the robot in. Uh, uh, no, we cannot. <laughs> yeah, actually, does anyone need to heal? Oh, actually, yeah, we did our 10-minute rest. We forgot you to wanna do a 10-minute rest. I, you I, didn't I say you did. That. No, I didn't bother. No, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. completely... I don't think I took much... I, don't t I didn't take much damage at all. Jason McDonald is playing the Ahsoki mechanic, Tuttle Blacktail, and his drone, Cheddar. Well, I lost a whole bunch... Okay, I spend the entire 10 minutes walking around irritatedly in front of Mo, going, God, are you ready? Can we go now? Please. Yeah, Mo admires your armor while you do that. As well You're basically as telling him to hurry up so that he can go down the passage. Well, I'm waiting for yeah. him to go down. Okay. Um, how about one of you guys, Technomancer, get on down there. Take a walk. Take a walk on the wild side. It's kind of not my thing, though. You've got the best armor. Yours, you should be fine. Are you doing a long he rest? He actually does now? make a decent argument. Am I doing a what? You know? Are you doing a long Am rest or now? No, I'm not even damaged. You took a way. tiny amount of damage. Yeah, you have a tiny amount of stamina. Damage. Nah. That's fine. Nope. I man up. Wow. Okay. Mo, there's a door in front of you. Let's see. No, Kara, you got the best armor. Give Although... us a walk. Front and center. On this door is a triangular touch pad, exactly the same as the other doors within this facility. Most peeking around the corner while uh, Akira does his walk. Do the walk, Akira. Akira is walking down I, I examine the, the touch pad. Do we, do we have any access cards or something? I thought we might. No, you mm -hmm. just, you just, um, you literally just touch the pad and it opens. That's all you need to do. Okay. And I ready my rifle and I touch the pad and it opens. Yeah, you Mo touch has his the rifle. Pad. It does not open. Instead, it blinks red instead of open. I run. <laughs> I run. I run away. Is all it does is blink red. Like it might be a trap. Get away. And I do that. Uh, okay. So you press the button. Nothing happens. It blinks red, and that's it. And I ran away. Nothing and then happened. He runs it away. didn't open. Nothing like that. Nope. Sounds like an engineering. And I, and I come back. You might have to run a bypass there, Tuttle. Are there any other doors, or are there just two going I'd north? I'd be willing to go take... I'll go take a look at it. Steve, are there only two doors to the north? Are there two doors to the south at all, or any there's doors There's a door to the, to the north, and then there's a, just two doors to the north and one door to the east. Oh, you're, we're talking... This, it was this first door, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. It was the first door? Yeah. My bad. Yeah. I'll cover you. But Mo likes the fact that you walked all the way down there and nothing happened. <laughs> all right. I will go ahead and try to check, like, interface with the door and see if I can open it. I was going to see if he can help. Okay. You take off the cover and it's actually engineering check to rewire it. It looks like it's been purposely locked. Oh, a 19 for a 44. Yeah. Wow. You successfully rewire it and the door, as you successfully rewire it, slides open. And what do we see? A monster. The door purposely locked. Can't be bad at all. No, can't be bad. Let's see. This 
small 15 by 15 foot chamber has stark white walls that are occasionally broken up by rectangular outlines near the floor and a few feet off the ground. The overhead lighting buzzes inconsistently. It's sort of like a small, like, bzz, bzz, bzz. The chamber appears to be a single person lavatory, and it looks like that this was nothing more than a bathroom. However, inside of this bathroom, a creature who was sitting here waiting for you to approach rises up and attacks Tuttle. No! Wait a minute. Roll okay, for yeah. combat! Oh my god, this thing looks freaky. Oh no. Oh yes, this thing is horrible. Oh no. Mm. No, botany day. Oh no. <laughs> we have to go. This is Seti Alpha 5. Oh, it's it's way worse than Botany Bay. Uh, let's see. What does he do? First thing he's going to do... Oh, he goes first. Oh, my God. Mo goes last. Of course. Jeez. He's actually trying a combat maneuver. He is grappling you and trying to strangle Tuttle. Okay, he successfully will hit you. Um, give me a fortitude save. I do not like this. 20. Good save. That's all I'm going to say. So instead of taking, well, it would have been horrific. We're just going to roll the damage instead. Let's see. What is it? It is, hmm, it is 21 points of damage. Okay, this large undead creature, it looks like someone has been lopped in this laboratory for tens of thousands of years and has turned into some horrific undead. He grabbed you by the throat and was sucking out your life force. He's literally like one of those vampires from the movie Life Force. Ooh, and I like that movie. Yeah, that's what's happening. Tuttle, you are grappled. And the words, in the words of Christmas Vacation, shitter's full. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. I'm grappled. Oh dear. Um, He's strangling you. Wait till after May. All right. I guess I will wait till after Rusty. I'll just stand here and be strangled for a bit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just that. hang there for a while. Uh, can I see the monster? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to go for both. Uh, move action, because I can see it is automatic get him, so plus two for everybody. But I'm also going to go for the bluff attack. Oh, wait, I made a mistake. You actually failed your strangle check. I'm looking at the wrong abilities. Sorry. Oh, I'm no. Another. I'm Let me waiting. Give some more damage. Oh, it's only two, so it's only another 12. Hold on. Yeah, he does, he does 2d12 plus 20 bludgeoning damage to you and here's where it gets fun three points of con damage okay that sucks you can go now rusty all right so that's 38 on my bluff um 37 bluff 38 actually 38 that might not be enough um what is let's find out that's it's 15 plus one one half it's dc Right. Okay. You barely make it, I believe. Barely. And so what's that have a negative two or something? It, does, it made it flat-footed to me and the rest yeah, of the party. Yeah, it, it doesn't uh, matter. My attack may you, fail, but it does Yeah, matter. your attack isn't even a plus four. four. Yes, Everyone I'm gets close. an effective plus four. How, how, how high is the, uh, is, the, is the hallway, the ceiling? Uh, let me see. Akira, you should wait for my move. Yeah, I, I need you to get out of the way, actually. Yeah, I'm in your way. Well, am I allowed, to take, to, am I allowed to take my turn now that Bob did his thing? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I believe it's something like 15, 20 feet, feet high. Yeah, something like 15? that. It's pretty high. Okay. Yeah, something like that. It's high enough. Right. I mean, the door is a small door, though, keep in mind. Right, right. Now I got a plan. Um, So Tuttle is doing something first, though, right? That's Tuttle's move. I was going to make a possibly futile attempt to break the grapple because strength is what I do so well. 
You could do uh, an escape artist checker. You should do that later. You should wait till so everyone to takes it. you can use escape. You can either use acrobatics, and you have to beat his KAC plus thirteen. <laughs> so, mm. uh, Good the luck with that. You doing that is this guy. By the way, let me back up. Uh, this guy is immensely strong and appears to be far, far more powerful than anything you've been fighting to date. Like, way past your weight class. A carrier up. Eddie Strangling Tuttle. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delay till after Mo. Everyone's And actually, Mo, actually, up. well, that's, okay, I'll do it all on my turn. That's fine. You're all up. right. Moe's Mo going to run. He is going to... No. Uh, uh, wow. Since, since this guy is grappled... Since this guy is grappled, can I move through his square? No, you may not. That, that's oh. only in Pathfinder, I think. Yeah. Uh, what? Hmm. I'm wondering. You could fall with you. Go, <laughs> withdraw. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I could what? I, I do. If I can get a free action, I say, "Mo, withdraw." I got a plan. Actually, uh, can you get Cheddar out of the way? I mean, Cheddar hasn't. Uh, oh, ha- have you taken a turn yet? Um. Uh, no, Tuttle? I'm next. Well, Tuttle did already, didn't he? Or no? No, I didn't actually get a chance to take my turn. Okay, all right. Um, I am going to attack him and then get out of the way. I mean, that's all I can do. Uh, I had my... I'm going to drop what my... What kind of action right. is, the ha- like, is the haste circuit? Is that a swift action? Yeah, it's a swift action. It happens next extra. It's really not going to help in this situation. Uh, I am going to... Actually, I am going to activate the, uh, the haste circuit uh, as a swift action. Um, it has no bearing on this round. However, I'm going to drop my uh, the, the rifle, bring my cold weapon, uh, my pike. Actually, no. I'm going to... Uh, no, I can't do this. Uh, I, I have to actually shoot him. Dang it, which sucks. All right, so... He's grappled. He, he can't do attack of opportunity anymore. No, it's not that. It's it's it's. I want to I want to shoot him, or I want to hit him with my melee and get out of the way. But I cannot uh, pull out my sword as a move action if I take another move action this turn. So I am going to shoot him with uh, the plus four. Okay. Two. Jeez. Great time to roll a two. We and, like that twenty twenty would have been nice. Yeah, and per our. Um, for our strategy, I'm actually going to... You're going when? I'm going to move t- there. Okay. You can and, move through them. Yeah. And I think while I move, I'm going to take out my uh, sword. Nice. Hmm. And I'm done. I'm done. Man. Okay. So. Oh, does he go? Right, so or are you no, no, I go. I go. <laughs> no, I get to go. Okay. I delayed. And Tuttle gets to go. I don't. Right. I'm kidding. Well, the Tuttle, you want to go for it? I mean, I've got a plan. I... I, yeah, I'll go. I don't know if I'm going to be all that successful at all, but I'll try to break out of the grapple. Yeah. If you succeed, then I may plan will change. So go ahead. So I'm sorry, you said acrobatics or athletics? I think you said acro- acrobatics, right? Well, it's not going to get it done. Rolls a 7 for a 15. Nope. Uh, you actually can still attack as long as well, you don't have... If I, how did I get an attack? Is he going to get an attack of opportunity if I shoot him? No, no. Or, the way it works my is... Knife or... You can use your knife. You can, Basically, you can't move. You take a minus two to your AC, attack rolls, reflex, initiative, dex. Um, except for those made to grapple your opponent, turn, or escape. In addition, you, can, you can't take action or acquire two hands. And you can't make attacks of opportunity. So... You could still attack. I mean, you can right. do spells and stuff. So well, I'm going to use my use dragon weapons. drake pistol. Oh yeah, you can do it point blank. You can shoot right into his gut. Yeah, four. All right, Cheddar, help me out here. Can Cheddar attack and move this turn? Because it would be great if Cheddar moved. All right, I'm going to move Cheddar so that Mo can get in there. I mean, I was going to yeah. attack with him, but okay. I mean, if he can attack and move, that would even be better. But... Do you need him out of the whole, out of the corridor entirely, or just so you can get no, in? No, just get behind Mo. I can't believe Mo moved there. <laughs> I'm shocked. What do you mean? What are you talking about? It's 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 as close as I can get without being in the way. All right. So first of all, what kind of check is it to identify this thing? It's like a it's like a mysticism. Uh, yes, for this as a free oh. free action mm-hmm. mysticism. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I should have done. 
right, mm, you rolled a one. Not, you guys are really <laughs> rolling poorly. You don't even know what this is. He appears to be a gaunt, desiccated Kashili wearing a clean white set of robes that have faded to gray with time. Okay. Um, as a move action, I move there. Yes. And as a standard action, I cast Dimension Door, grab Tuttle, and I teleport away. What? <laughs> <laughs> power of magic. Wow. All right. Brave, I'm liking the power Akira. of magic. Brave Akira and ran away. Bravely well. ran away, away. You know, you better not teleport far. Let me tell you. You teleport back to the ship. Bye bye. Uh, you <laughs> instantly <laughs> teleport yourself <laughs> into any spot. You can bring up the four additional willing or unconscious creatures with you. So, are you going to bring the bad guy with you? Hell no. Ooh, well, yes. No, no, are you no. sure? <laughs> you could. I, I don't want to. You could. Because I don't want to continue oh, okay. the grapple. It's, it's, he's killing him. Oh, it would be so, fun, so, though. So, oh, I, so I want to uh, move Tuttle to be the, directly south to me. We'll just go back okay. there. Okay. I mean, we're um, not going to. We're not. No, south of me, like to, to form a uh, line, I think. Like that. Okay. Okay, so yeah, 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 exactly. you grab him, you cast your spell, and you teleport like fifty feet to the west. And I mentioned the power of magic. Wow, you, you really kept that in your pocket, man. Damn, that's yep. a good escape. All right, casting that one off. Well, now we lose. What? The juice What's going is on loose. with Mo? That's what oh, he's coming for Mo now. He's I know. That's why I, I, hey, wait, wait. Why does Mo have a thing on him already? What does that mean? I have I no know. idea what that is. Oh, that's your hay circuit. No, that's your hay circuit. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought that was my uh, whammy or something. Oh, why did why did Mo move there? <laughs> I know. That's what I said. I can't believe Mo okay. moved Okay. He tries you're, you're in an excellent spot. I think that's great. Just stay right where you are. He tries to grapple you, and because you are Mo and you have your new armor, he misses. He only oh, gets a good. twenty-nine against your KAC plus eight. So he's literally just like, Arr! and he's like moving towards you and tries to put his massive arms around Mo. He has this a guy... plus twenty-four to attack. That's yeah. crazy. Rusty's up. Oh, this guy's way out of your class. No well, hold on. Here's my question. Uh, can I see him? Yes. Far, far away, down the hallway, right on top of Mo, and nowhere near me. Can I see him? He's 30 feet away. Yes. Not that yeah. That's great. And then in that case, I don't understand what this whole out of my class thing. He's perfect. It's great. I'm going to do plans A and B. Plan A is, of course, uh, get him. Plan B is my usual. I'm going to bluff and attack. You, you get a plus one for your attack from Mo. I have to decide. Uh, the last one was barely, so I need to re-roll that, don't I? So, okay, I'm going to re-roll the well, we're, We are rolling well. There we go. Okay, so um, I am attacking. He rolls a 19 for a bluff skill. Gets a 41. So I am also at a minus four. Or Sorry, I'm also at a plus four, but I think I'm at a minus four for the corner, so it's a normal attack. Rolls a two for a 13 attack. Which is why I lose. Yeah, okay. Everybody gets a plus four, including Mo. Mo's up. A full attack. All right, crit, crit, crit gods. This is where we want it. Rolls a three, and he rolls a five. Wow, what a bad time for wow. that. Wow. Thank you, crit gods. You're the best. Um... You guys are doing wonderful against a super powerful creature. This should be interesting. This is kind of funny. I'm going to do that because I have a haste circuit. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, did you worried. try to run away? No, I'm strategically using Chuddle as a... Uh, this guy well, likes life a... force. He's not going to yeah. get it through from a robot. Yeah, that's an attack of opportunity if you're moving, though. Um, are you moving? Yeah. Because you can't take a five-foot step, so he's going to attack you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to move there. All right, Eddie, let's attack on you. He, in his hand, has the remnants of a dagger, slashes at you, rolls a six and hits you with a 30. Oh, my God. Does 30 points of damage to you. Good thing you have damage mitigation and only does 20 points. 44 plus 20 points of damage. Wow. A on your ultra up, thin dagger. Total. Wow. 
I think that was worth it. <laughs> well, you guys better get away from him. Oh, is he going to strangle uh, Cheddar? I'm going to go well, ahead and try yeah, to try to him. let him get the robot life force from him. Press the button. No, oh, right. I actually probably should have done that. Oh, that's what he should have done. No, press the button. I, I don't think I can. What's his, what's his plus on him right now to hit? Is there any plus? Uh, he gets plus four for Bob. Okay. Yeah, so get plus four for me. Mo, I mean, sorry, Tuttle manages to hit 14 points of damage. You barely hit him. Good job. And then Shatter's going to try to attack. Shatter's going to try to attack. Hey, I'll take it. When you, we can roll a 10 and hit, that's good. Four. Oh, that's not a 10. Hero, the very scared hero. Can I shoot him from there? I can, right? Sure, it's going to be a minus though because you're against the wall. That's I, I, I don't get I don't get minus for cover. Okay, then you get a minus for cover. I can't hit the ahead. button, can I? No, technically the button is on me. Yeah, yeah, that's why you're not even oh. close to it. All right, you got any kind of plus from anyone? Now you know why that this door was closed. Uh, you get plus four from Rusty. Yep, but not from Mo. No, no, I have my no, sword. No, Mo's, Mo's not very helpful. I'm I'm out of range. Hits! Wow, that's, that's a nice shot. shot. Disintegration! Nice shot. <laughs> yes, disintegrator rifle. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm going to move back a little. Everyone getting further and further away from this thing. No one wants to be near when it tries to strangle you and starts draining your life force. I'm going to get kind of close to the stairs for reasons. Well, Rusty is obviously uh, tanking this guy, it looks like. Uh, uh, okay. Look, well, I am guess what? the second closest, you know, sentient being to it. That's all I'm saying. Oh, it's going to you because life force. It's going for life. Oh, he ain't going to get any. All right. Oh, <laughs> undead. I'm sorry. Totally he not undead. I, I deny that. I'm not undead. I am a perfectly That is so human. funny. That's great that he's coming for, for me. Once that actually works in our favor. Maybe not, oh my though. God, give me a fortitude. He attacks, save. but he does not get any life force. That's the yes, whole he point. Does. John yes, actually he is does. right. That's not oh, true. God damn it. All right, what do you need? Fort save. You want a 21. Oh, he wanted 22. 22. And that's what's really However, game because are you ready? I'm lucky. All right. 44 points of damage as he starts to strangle you. He does oh not, however, drink your life force. He's instead just. Strangling but but did it, it, isn't it now starving to death? He went over here for life force and he found out very little. Oh, he's going to try again next round. He's going to keep but going. There's not. There's there, there, he got nothing out of me. I don't think you get the undead immunities and stuff, right? You don't. You don't. Uh, I actually do have the undead subtype. So you do, but I you do also have the you also you have both. You get the you get. I also have. You're not, un- I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And undead have con like. You're, he, you're, he's sucking out the negative life force. If anything, it's helping him. What? What? Uh, might be healing him. Is he grappling you? Yeah, he's grappled now. Rusty. And, okay, so and, as uh, a move Marie action, guy. it's a get him because yes. I can do that under new circumstance. Yeah, so everyone sure. has a plus yeah. two, including me, because of course my second action will be to try to escape. Uh, strength is not my thing, so I'm going to do an escape artist champ. And one second, I have to find it. Can you do a mysticism check to figure out what this thing is? I tried it did poorly. I don't know. Rusty might have a better one because he's, well, uh, a little bit on the dead side. There is none. Sorry, there. I'm think having you have to trouble do acrobatics. finding my escape artist. One yeah, there is no. Uh, acrobatics acrobatic. might be it. Oh, acrobatics. It's acrobatics. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's all acrobatics now. Escape artist is gone. one. It's just acrobatics. Fine, I have a decent acrobatics. Not actually very good, but not even close enough. Mm. Wow. Right. No. So you all have a plus two to attack it. All right. And then plus another plus two because he's grappled, so he's a minus two to his AC while he's grappling. Rusty. Right, he has the grapple condition. So. so we drew him out though, which is good. We drew him out to the shallow. It's really, really good. Yeah, and he's gonna do a full attack because he can. Oh, that's right. You have the haste circuit. Uh, this is at a minus two. Okay. Go ham on him. It's actually a minus zero. Uh, I thought I thought we had a plus two and not a plus four. Doesn't matter. First one hits. 
Okay. Oh, Damn. Yeah. Oh, my God. 69 oh, points of damage. 69 Six, damage. 68. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I did 38 plus a lot. That's that's 107 points. Youch. So you did 31 and 69. Oh, I thought I did exactly 30. 100. No, that was oh. your roll. It exactly did exactly 100 damage. points of damage in one round. Now, are you still going to complain about your class? By the way, he's still alive. <laughs> he's still standing. Oh, yes. oh, I know he's still alive. Uh, I love my class. I uh, complain about my party. Oh, <laughs> snap. What are you talking about? Oh, my God. I, I've never complained about the soldier class. I've never complained about the soldier class. What are you Have talking about? about Akira? What are you talking about, Lewis? Hey, uh, Tuttle is up. What are you doing? Uh, I guess it's time to do some more attacking. Nice. I'm going to go full attack. Okay. You get a plus one from Mo. Okay. Six will miss. And the two will miss. Rolls a six and rolls a two. Oh, wait. Skip that. That's a good move. That's no, a good move. No, because I can't move and attack. Yeah. No, that's that's a great Akira, move. you're up. All right, yeah, he might Akira. Well him. Get him so we can't really do anything. Akiro casts a spell. Man, I still want to cast. Teleport me next. Teleport me next. <laughs> I want to go for a ride. All right, I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Uh, nice and simple. Plan, yeah, plan a. a. All right, roll damage. Uh, so I'm doing a full round attack of Magic Missile, so it's three missiles, right? Is that how that works? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so let me roll damage. Are you sure that's what you want to do? You already it does. Me. It does decent damage. It does good damage and is guaranteed hit. Because I have a feat that gives it plus five additional, so it's oh, okay. Plus three, so it's three D four. It does good damage. Yeah. I mean, it's an automatic hit. Too. Yeah, that's true. It's okay. Wow, you rolled pretty well too. It's 18. not 18 low damage. Yeah, I'll take I'll take eighteen. Eighteen's good. That's 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 sellable. We can sell that. Slam, slam, slam. And I can't. Uh, I can't move. I'm done. He will continue to try to strangle Rusty. Oh, I'm I'm a little upset by that. God. Oh, strangle Rusty somehow. Rusty. Oh, that's very sad. Slips out of his grasp as he tries to grab you and rip your throat out. So I am no longer grappled. You're no longer grappled, and neither is he. And he's all like, all like, it's like a dog. Like when he hears a weird sound. Die. He's done. Uh, Shooting a gun in a creature's face, that does not provoke. Oh, that will provoke. And he's no longer grappled, so he will. Yeah, okay. So in that case. He can hit you with his little dagger. It doesn't do that much points of damage. Oh, where are you going? You're running away? I'm running away. I'm going to... uh, don't take, take a your five ball and step go away, home. a withdraw action, and then I'm going to use get him so everybody has guarded. plus two to hit him. And that's it. A guarded step is what I'm taking. I totally said that all three times when I called it other things. I'm going to shift five feet. Sorry, that was fourth edition. Mm-hmm. I'm so confused right now. Uh, and I'm going to get him so everybody has plus two, and I am done. Mo. Oh, I guess. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. This is going to be good. Full attack. Oh god. Um, is it plus four? Well, I'm doing uh, a full attack. Rig. Yeah. Rolls a well, six. Well, it's not. Wait, he didn't 20... do get him. Did you do got him on him? No, you did. He did. Yeah, he did. He did. I didn't see it. He did. He said that's all he did. He did five stuff and got yeah, him. Yeah, that right? was it. Uh, you all have plus two to hit him, but that's it. Miss, miss. Six and a oh, seven. Oh, that wow. Sucks. Hold on, I'm not quite done. Oh, are you gonna move? Oh, are you gonna move? All right, fine. You, you've heard of momentum before that we call that no no momentum. All right, hurry up. No momentum, co no momentum. Oh, you're running behind Cheddar. What a wimp. What a wimp. He's got reach, doesn't he? Shut up, Steve. I'm doing tactical uh, combat. You'll you'll you. I don't I don't teach lessons. I are am Tuttle. I am Tuttle. You're extra. <laughs> really? Go right ahead. It's gonna go right to you. Aeon Tuttle's up. I'm not going to do a full attack because it seems like the number to hit's pretty high. Well, though, actually, last time I rolled was six and a two, so that's not really... You hit with a ten. All right, I guess I'm going to do a full attack. Two? Oh, no. 
an 18 for 11 there you points go. of fire damage. Good job. Now Cheddar can go. Tactical, Tactical razor, razor bat. bat. <laughs> oh, that was weird. What's going on with these twos? I don't think I've ever seen this many twos. We are missing a lot. <laughs> we are missing <laughs> a lot of twos. A lot of twos. All right. All right. Kiro, Kiro, save he runs, the day. I'll try save, and save the, the day. day. Kiro runs over here. And he, 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 you see him like glance to the left, thinking about running up those stairs and out. But then, <laughs> he, then he decides to cast a spell. And he says, Stand he can't do it. back. And he casts. Arcing Surge in the diagonal line through hitting just him. Bam! Perfect diagonal. DC 18 reflex save. He automatically makes it. 19. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> he doesn't have a super good reflex. That's pretty... Oh, All right, All right but he still takes it. half damage. Still takes half damage. Oh, my God! <laughs> All right, so he takes 20 damage then. Yes! Glory wow. of the kill! Oh, oh, Unlimited power! Oh. Saves the day. How much life did he have left? Mm, about, about, about. He had 185 hit points. Well, so after Mo, he got attacked, he had zero. Yeah, I'll true. Mo really saved the day. He hits, I mean, he basically, his strangle, the 2d12 plus 20 plus 1d4 con damage. Um, Damn. The ultra thin dagger did forty four twenty. It was a CR twelve, wow. and you, uh, yeah, you got it, you got it. I mean, you guys moved out and got him to uh, kind of get yep. around tactics, tactics, advanced combat tactics. So wow. you kill him. He uh, collapses in a heap and goes from undead to just plain dead. Dead. He. This it, He's yeah. He's just. Blah. Does he dissolve <laughs> or go in vapor, or does he have like, anything no. on him? He actually has some stuff on him, believe it or not. Oh. All right, let's search. He has an ultra thin dagger that you can uh, get back. Sticking in Mo's belly, and he has Kasili Hollow Armor Two, which functions as Squad Hard Light series. I have no idea what. What that the heck is. is that? I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, I have Hero Lab in book. front of me. What's the name of it again? I think you, I think you said Squad Hard Light. Yeah, Squad Hard Light, Hard Light series. Holy crap! I do not armor. see it in Hero Lab. It's there. It's here. It is. Um... Oh damn, that's nice armor. That's level twelve. Shoot, I want that. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Hard Light series squad level 12, 30,000 credit plus 15 kc plus 15 eac four slots light armor nice it's like the best light armor that exists on most of them oh it's light armor i need that yeah okay so wow. mo puts that on mo puts that on it's a, it's a, it's a plus 15 plus 15 Six it's thing. It's got four slots. Incredibly good. It's, bl it's it blows away everything you have to date. Like by well, yeah. you know, I gotta say, actually, what makes sense, uh, Mo, is that I should take this and then you'll no, take it. No, you're, you're wasting your. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's great. Do you have um, light armor, Bob, or no? I do, and no. I'm wearing it, but it's not as good as this, and I really no. need more better. It actually is really. It's actually really good for me. It has no, a plus no, no, six no. to not, dex no, bonus no. too. This yeah. thing is crazy. Well, that's the thing. Well, that's the yeah, thing that's good right. for me. Because... And I have a high dex as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I have uh, a twenty uh, dex. I I agree that it belongs to Mo. That's there it is. Well, we might Mo. We might be able to talk because you might want my armor because my armor is really good too. What is your armor? My armor. My armor is is heavy. First What's, of all, which you uh, like. I it's need plus two thirteen plus, plus. It's plus thirteen plus fifteen. Uh, which is slightly not as good, but it's also okay. it, it's also got lots of cool stuff. It's radiation resistant, and it's got a black force field. You know, if it, if it's if let, let, let me tell you about this used car I got here. I, I'll tell no, you no, all no. about it. It's got the <laughs> white wall tires. You know, I, you want, yeah, Mo, you want a classic feel, something it, that it, it's hard. If to it's define. that good for your decks, I it should go to you. Uh, yeah, because right I'll, now I'll take your old armor. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't need it's definitely it's definitely um, an improvement for my decks because it gives me it lets me use my full plus five. So I'm right now I'm getting what, your armor gives me plus three to to, to all the. I mean, it's huge upgrade anyway. Huge. I don't need yeah. KAC. I mean, I'm still getting a plus uh what two uh for for EAC. So no. yeah, 
I'll totally. So yes. although you get the good although armor. Tuttle now has three points of con damage and has part of his hit points and fortitude save removed, you did get some really nice armor. I'll tell you that it was worth the risk. Yeah. Actually, this yep. actually was worth the risk. That oh, totally. Is insanely good armor. The best thing. This is actually the single best piece of gear you have found in this entire game by far. Like, unbelievably good. Does Congrats. this guy have other stuff? No, that was it. That's literally all he had. So. Uh, Akira, what is the right. name of that armor that you have? All right. So the name of my armor is. Hold on. So what does yeah. it give you, Akira? It's called. So Kef- I put it in. Just spell uh, it out. Okay, it's called K H E F A K. What does it give you a plus to? What's your new pluses now? What's your EAC? It'll be plus. It'll be plus fifteen, plus fifteen, and then it's um, and then I, I know. But what was it? What would that go up to? Plus, I got. I got a lot. What would it? All right, figure it out. You're gonna, you're gonna have to actually put it. I mean, we're gonna stop now, so you might as well just put it on the sheet. Yeah, you know, I'm like going to put, put it on my character. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do all that. Well, everyone's moving around their armor. This 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 session, <laughs> you guys have moved your armor three times. <laughs> just think about that. Tuttle upgraded. Then Tuttle upgraded again, I think, and then Mo upgraded, and then Mo upgraded, and then Kira upgraded. Is it? In fact, is, yeah. the only one who did an upgrade is Rusty. Does this oh. armor have any? Does this armor have, have any upgrades in, on it? Maybe no, no upgrades. Okay. No. Nothing. All right. So my armor is a. I told you, right? You can. You, can you see it? I can't even look it up in Hero Web. It's not in Hero Web. K H K H E F A K. There's no K H's. You probably didn't buy all of the things, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a no. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it was, it, you know what this is? This is from the new book, from the uh, from the new armor book and weapons book. Oh, he said I, he I bought, bought the it. armory. He I said bought he the bought armory. the armory. No, you didn't. Did you turn it did on? You, I did. Did you click? Did you select the click on it? You click it? You have to turn it on, by the way. So, like inside Hero Lab, it won't do it automatically. You have to click it under. Uh, Jesus on. Christ. All right. Okay. So, uh, all right. I'll. I'll Figure this out. Hey everyone, Steve here. So there we go. The boys managed to survive, but just barely. This thing was a marooned one, CR-12. It had 185 hit points. It had extremely high KACs and EACs. But most importantly, its offensive ability was this thing called Strangle that would do... 2d12 plus 20 points of damage and then 1d4 con damage 1d4 con damage is like another 10 to 20 hit points of damage because they're level 10 so that was really really deadly and then on top of that it would just you know choke them and keep doing the damage over and over again but and this was actually kind of a shame that you can't really see it they really actually had excellent tactics I almost will call it the reverse conga line. I've seen them do this before. The marooned one was in a very tiny room in the north, and then the guys were lined up like a conga line. And what was happening is that each of them was putting someone in front, facing the marooned one, and then when that person was hit, they would pull that person out and someone else would go in. And that way, no one was getting the brunt of all the attacks. And they were slowly moving backwards, so the marooned one would continuously have to jump after them, go one after another, and couldn't do full attacks. Again, it's it's almost like a tactical retreat with them switching off who's in front. It's actually very elegant, and they did a really good job with it. And that's kind of why none one dropped or died, is that they were always switching out who was getting the brunt of the main attack. And that is really what makes these guys so good, is that they joke and sort of fool around and rip on each other, but secretly, behind the scenes, they're actually doing amazing tactics and getting out of the way of the monster. I was really surprised how deadly this encounter was when I was seeing these rolls, and people were getting hit hard. There was actually a lot of people near death at the end of this encounter. But they survived, and this was exactly what I meant by padding, is that there's this whole section that has nothing but monster encounters. Now, it's kind of cool, like, oh, there's this monster, and it was, like, undead, and it was locked inside this bathroom, and it's just been there for hundreds of thousands of years, and then it gets out and tries to kill them. There's actually a few more, like, areas that are all locked up, 
but it, I don't know, it just didn't really work in the sense that, like, yeah, it's kind of cool, but I would have preferred there was more cultists here, or these cultists were fighting these things, or I don't know, it just felt, it felt like very tacked on. And this just happens, I'm not going to blame the writer, it just happens because you don't want to keep fighting the exact same things over and over again, so you have to kind of get, like, these new types of encounters and monsters in there, and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you have to just figure out creative ways to get them in there, and I think it also has to do with the map is that this is actually really off on the side like this is its own section of the map you can do everything in this complex and never go into this area so that's what i meant about sometimes there's padding and if it wasn't for us having some extra time they probably would have never even gone in this area they would have just gone to the main big bad fought him hopefully win and then continue on the adventure and then go to book six as for my little society quest, hopefully everyone's listened to it. If not, please do. It is a completely self-contained podcast. It came out on Monday. It has beginning, middle, and end. You can listen to a whole adventure. It has myself. It has John Stats. It has Chris Beamer. It has Mark Steifer and Linda Zayas Palmer, who also wrote the adventure. And one of the things about this adventure is that, well... Lots of people die. There's one thing about Pathfinder 2 is that almost every single fight that I've had, someone drops so far. And I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been talking to a lot of people. I don't think the game is that much harder. I think it's a little bit harder than Pathfinder 1st Edition. I just think the game plays so differently that Pathfinder 1st Edition and 3.5 and Starfinder. And if you think about it, 3.5 and Pathfinder 1st Edition have been out for like almost 20 years now. It's almost ingrained in our DNA and how to play. And Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the math and the way it works is so different in so many ways that it's hard to break out some of these habits. And in fact, if you listen to this adventure, this happens to John. John is insistent that something he wants to do is not going to work. And we have to basically beg him to do it because, or at least try something new, because you have to really break out of Pathfinder first edition rule set and mindset. Now, I don't want to beat up on John because I've actually seen this happen a few times now. He, he is actually recorded and on a podcast of doing this and he kind of felt helpless because things were really, really, really bad after just one round of combat. It got pretty horrible and he wasn't so much complaining. It's just that he felt powerless and helpless. But I tell you, there's one thing I've learned playing all these games is just try something out. And if you have a good GM, they'll figure out rules for it. It doesn't always have to be in the rules. You can kind of just figure something out on the fly. And that's kind of what John did, is that he did something that I didn't exactly have the rules for. Good thing that Mark was there and the guy who wrote the rules, and he and I together figured out a way to handle it, and it worked out fine. So I would recommend that if you're playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition, or even Starfinder, or, well, any game really, just try something out. Just just try it. Even if you don't think it's going to work, you never know. Because I can't count the number of times that these guys have done something really strange. And I say, okay. In fact, if you look at Tuttle, how many times has Tuttle tried to do something really strange and then he saves the party using tactics that might not be exactly out of the book or exactly have rules for? And like breaking through a wall and throwing a teleportation puck out or something like that. And I really can't recommend enough. Always trying to think outside the box whenever you guys are playing one of these games. And if you want to hear an example of that, check out the Pathfinder Quest. I just posted it on Monday, and it's a lot of fun. And if you guys liked it, let me know, and I'll post more of those. Because now a second quest came out, and I can get more people to play. So let me know. So some quick show notes. Don't forget new podcast every single Tuesday and Friday. And do subscribe to us on iTunes and Android and Spotify. Everywhere you can listen to podcasts. I actually was online the other day, and there's so many podcast readers out there. There was like over two dozen. I've never even heard of most of them, but we're on them. That's all that really mattered. Just seem to be everywhere. So do check that out. Also do check out Jason's Talking Combat column every single Monday and every single Thursday. He has Talking Plaguestone. They have been going up rather late, usually at night. 
but that's fine you know we do get them up on time barely but they do come up so if you're looking for them and you can always you know go in the discord as soon as they're available i always post it on the discord i usually post a sharing link on social media but just go to the website or go to the discord when you see it, you can click on it and go to it and uh if not just you know go to the website it'll definitely be there by the next day so if, if you want to go on a tuesday or a friday you'll you'll make sure you check out Jason's talking column do check out our Discord if you want to play games, get a free t-shirt, check out some other stuff. We're going to be doing something soon, which I think you're all going to like, that I'm not going to talk about because it's super top secret. But you just go to discord.rollforcombat.com. Do follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Reddit. There we go. I got all three or four in there. Yeah, four or five. I can't count. Five things. And also do check out our Patreon. We are hopefully going to expand the Patreon kind of soon. I'm trying to figure out a way of making things on there that people want. One of the most common things people do is that if you do a $5 donation that you put up an adventure that no one else can listen to. I don't know. I kind of don't know if that's good or bad. If we should spend the time and get an A-plus group together. And then I can actually do another adventure. And having the extra income will actually allow me maybe to hire someone to actually help edit it and do the work because to be honest running the adventures isn't really that hard I, I have a lot of free time i can actually run these adventures we record several episodes at once so i could easily add another adventure into the queue the biggest bottleneck right now is editing these things it takes me a ton of time to edit it but i've been thinking of getting a podcast producer for the show i don't know if anyone knows anyone or wants to be a podcast producer it would basically you would go through the episodes and edit them and take out a lot of the ums and ahs and clean up different areas if people are talking over each other you would separate those out you also take out like little noises people are coughing or if a dog's barking so it does require a fair amount of editing it only takes a few hours but you know you do it every single week and that's really what i need i'm trying to think about or find a producer someone who actually wants to go through edit the show and make it all pretty we can do the rest a lot of producers will also then put the show together and post it online and do social media to do everything i don't really need that i really just need someone to produce and edit the show so if anyone might be interested it will pay by the way i'm not going to ask anyone to do this for free it is a paying gig but it would be well something you'd have to do pretty often at least uh, once or not twice or maybe even three times a week it does take up time but if anyone might be interested or has some experience or knows anyone let me know i'm definitely looking for a podcast producer but anyhow with that definitely check out the patreon and then finally do check out our website we just put up the review for starfinder alien archive 3 and we just got the brand new Starfinder Character Operations Manual. So we're going to be doing a review of that. And we got the Lost Omens Character Guide. So we're going to be doing a review of that. So be on the lookout for all of those. Phew. But with that, thanks again for listening. Be on the lookout for next week's adventure. It's going to be a special one with Stephen Radney McFarlane, the guy who wrote this book. And I'll talk and see you guys next week. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, a Starfinder actual play podcast. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at RollForCombat.com or drop us a line at contact at RollForCombat.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and other social media platforms. been listening to Roll for Combat. Until next week, always remember Moe's motto, enough talk, I'm opening the door. <laughs>